using your head and your club to help you. Um, first thing that comes up there, it's life is defined, if you like, by what happens on the pitch. And World After Sport is not here to talk to you about performing on the field. Um, but as I've said, I think by having a strong vision of your future and having a plan off the field does enhance what you do on the pitch. Um, think about, as a, from a playing perspective, how you can relate and make the most of your opportunities. So if we go through the presentation here, it's sponsors. Um, consider all the sponsors that are there. Um, Martin, actually, I've met you because, you know, you were a sponsor at, Mar at, at Leicester Tigers. Um, maybe our personal relationship is worth talking about here is that, um, first of all, I was I'm naturally suspicious of, of uh, people that love rugby too much. And, uh, but, but what by developing a relationship with you, um, I think that, that and you being a sponsor at Leicester, and me obviously being a former Leicester Tigers player, it's quite a good example of, of how players can actually uh, work to the to their betterment, to develop their futures by working with sponsors if they do it carefully. Do you want to talk about this bit? You have to take yourself off mute, mate. Is, is anybody there? There we go. Everyone's here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I was talking to myself, which is probably the best way for me, to be fair. Um, so I, I couldn't agree more. Is For me, um, it's difficult on both sides because as a, as a sponsor, you want to maximize the investment you're putting into the club um, and into, into your business at the same time, of course. So you want to be talking to players, you want them to be on your side, you want them to help perhaps, potentially help build your brand a little bit and build your business. But what you don't want to do is annoy them, frustrate them, um, and also the club, of course. Um, and working with the right person can be invaluable so it, it for me it's a two-way street and that's where i think you and i hit it off when we met tim is that firstly it was it was one of those where I both, we both had a beer so it was it was a little bit more fluid in terms of conversation but um it was one of those where you're you're looking at me going oh god here we go again i've got another guy wanting my black book and wanting my my contacts whereas i was thinking do you know what i think you and i could do some really good work together. Um, and I'd got an idea, but it was one of those where now's not the right time, but I needed to try and encourage you, you know, you to, to give me a little bit of your time to help me explain. And obviously, as you know, it took us two, three, four, five sit downs to go through where you are, where I am, what my business idea is, how we can work together. Um, and and it really, you know, we, I think we've, we've hit it off in terms of how we are, we, we've got a similar mentality on this. Um, but it takes time and, and, you know, as you've said in some of the other points is as an, as an athlete and as a coach, you've got to be wary of those around you. You've got to be vigilant as to who's the, who's the ones to listen to, who's not. Um, but absolutely, as a sponsor, um, you know, my experience was the players didn't feel comfortable and confident talking around you. They were nervous. They didn't really know what to say sometimes. But at the end of the day, sometimes it's just about having a chat it's just about seeing if there's anything i can do as my business to help the athlete and how the athlete might be able to help and do things for me because at the end of the day if you work around this this slide as a whole it's about talking and, and enhancing and you know i could be the next um employer of one of the players and so you know i want to find the right player who is interested in my business and I think clubs are starting to get it a bit more and starting to try and assign players to the right sponsors. Certainly I've heard that in some of the clubs. And I think that's essential because at the moment it's the business's choice. That they, you know, I, I want to go and sponsor George Ford or I want to go and sponsor Ellis Genji or whoever it may be. Well, that might be fine. But actually, if I go and sponsor one of the other players, um, he might be fascinated in world after sport or base eight innovations or whatever it may be because it's something that he holds dear to and something that he believes in and actually it's something that he will contribute to whereas if if you just pick it out and pick it at random then it may not be quite so productive for either person yeah, so, so think, again world after sport is here to help players and athletes work out what their futures are but also to help them work out how they can enhance today like you've said on the previous slide is it 
prepare today, think about today, but think about that in terms of tomorrow as well. And for me, the corporate work is, is a great opportunity to, to create those uh, networks, to develop your opportunities, to think about what you like, but what you don't like. So if I move around the circle and Tim, please come jump in at any point here. If I go down to, uh, sorry, across to operations, rugby clubs, sports clubs are not just what happens on the pitch, but they're obviously everything that goes on off it as well. So as an athlete or as a coach, you've got the opportunity to talk to those departments and maybe work out which of those are of any interest to you. You know, you've got marketing, operations, finance, hospitality, management, sports, sports, performance, um, social media teams, and so much more that go on behind the scenes to make the club run, tick. I won't say smoothly, uh, certainly not at the moment with COVID, um, but that's what the objective is, is to make them work as effectively as possible to make money to allow them to afford to keep the business going which allows the players to be signed on and and, and kept and and uh, adopted so for players they've got the opportunity to go and sit and spend time with those departments and learn what that department does how it does it how they set a strategy for it or whatever it may be that you'd like to learn about and it's invaluable to do that within the club but it's invaluable to do that with your sponsors, potentially, if they're of interest to you. But don't be shy of just looking at your own sponsor, but look at all of the sponsors. Look at your mate's sponsors and go, actually, do you know what? I really wish I was I had him as a sponsor because he interests me. Ask those kind of questions. But like I say, use, use those club, uh, sponsors to your advantage wherever appropriate. And don't just think about the big businesses, think about the small businesses. Because if you think about a small business, they still have all of those departments. It might just be that the departments are all run by the same person. Or there's only two or three of them in the business. But actually, they're still a really good business, really solid business. Um, but there's only three of them running 10 departments, not 10 people running 10 departments or 100 people running 10 departments. So you might think, actually, I do want to become a business leader of my own. I want to have my own business in the future. So learning from a small business might be as invaluable to you as talking to a big business. Therefore, move to supporters, as we've said already, there are those supporters who just want to get your autograph. There are those that just want to be around you and have photos with you. And I get that. And, and that makes absolute sense. And, there's, you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, but it's just about the athlete and the coach being wary of that. And it's just about being vigilant. So some will be time wasters. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but as, it, as we've said, is be open minded. Listen to the opportunities, pick them out. And people like World After Sport can help you. How do you choose the right ones? How do you say no to people? Because it's very easy to just keep spun, what I call spongy, which is, you know, letting that water fill up and holding it. And then eventually it gets so much that you have to drain it out again. But there's times when and ways of learning and, and understanding which ones are the time wasters just by what they say, just by what they do, just by how they act. Um, and there's those that are not the time wasters who put the, and they're probably the ones who say less, the more, because the more you have to sell yourself, the more effort you've got to make. That means the more, you know, the more that's in there. And for me, you know, you've got a real opportunity as athletes and as coaching staff to actually embrace some of that. As, as Tim and I have said on previous calls and, and um, we talk to each other and have a laugh about it is we players have to return to Civvy Street at some point. Um, and now that can't be just before they become a coach, but they still have to return to Civvy Street. And therefore, when you're in Civvy Street, people don't throw themselves at you and, and open the doors to you quite as welcomingly as when you're an athlete. So there's a real opportunity where we can, as world after sport um, people, help drive in employment, drive support, drive coaching, drive leadership, drive, drive plans, etc., and help you move. And as the last or oh, penultimate sentence says on the supporters one is, listen, and let's see what we can learn. We can all learn something from someone. I'm learning every time I have these calls off somebody. And it's been, you know, fabulous for me to help and help me shape how world after sport will go. But I'm hoping that it also helps you guys um, and, it, and it's something that you'll go, actually, I just want to sound Martin out about that and have a conversation 
or actually I've got a player or I am a player who would like to get more coaching and support and I would like to do more with Martin and with Tim and uh, with all the people that we've got engaged in the business now. So, you know, I'm hoping it's again two way street. And the last one I'll come to just very quickly is local community because it's the same thing and I don't want to repeat myself too often is again, what's around you. Uh, Charlie, I'm going to look at you on that one and say, look, you're in Jersey. You've got this wonderful little island where you can zip around within a, an hour. So what's around you? What what businesses are there that can help? You know, you may be in, um, I don't know, in, in Cardiff and there's loads of great businesses there. You may be in Leicester and there's some great businesses there. What's around you, which is of stimulation of interest to you that you could actually tap in and approach and do your research, look into it see what's there for your you know these these businesses will love the opportunity to work with people like um, athletes of all sports of all interests um, but it means that we've got to work together um, and whatever we try and do it, it does take unfortunately effort it does take work it does take research it does take activity and hopefully that's where myself can help a little bit and, and all the people on this call can help uh, and also be helped so Tim uh, before I move to the next slide is there anything you want to add to that yeah I think it's just it's just a question of it's, it's a mindset isn't it that we um, instead of looking at a, at a chore all these opportunities whether it be sponsors supporters local community it's an opportunity for for us to try and reach out and ask the simple question you know what do you think of me we don't know what our brand is we make assumptions about what people think about us but have we got the confidence to ask the question? You know, go to marketing and say, what value am I to you? Go to a bank manager and say, what, what value could I be to you? You know, what skills are you looking for? What competencies that I've got are you looking for in, in, in the work environment? And start, start asking the questions, don't be scared. Um, and, and just, uh, it's, it's that mindset to say that when we're not on the field, when I'm not doing my ergo, when I'm not running a coaching session, I've got to be working just as hard at the business of me um, with the contacts that I can, that I can get into. And you, although it's tricky um, and you want to play on Saturdays if you're a player, whatever, but you, you, your brand value is at its height, really, when you don't need it. You've got your income. You, you've got your security. You've got the lads wanting to go and have a coffee. But if you can maximize the access you've got to all these important decision makers now, if you can start clarifying where your strengths are, but also where your weaknesses are um, and what sort of business you want to get involved with. You can start organizing that work experience. You can start drilling down a little bit into your own skill gaps. You know, if you want to go and work in, in say physical education, say you want to be a personal fitness trainer, how do I do it? Start, start the journey. Is it something you could actually be doing now? Um, as opposed to waiting till you, you lose your income, you lose your confidence, potentially. By then, you've got two or three kids. Uh, by then, you've got a big mortgage. So the idea is that you, you, you uh, use the people around you um, to suck out information, to help you develop in all your little pots, which will go.